Whit, what's going on, dude? Um, hey guys. And uh, what what would you say when when you eat tonight at like whatever six, seven, eight o'clock? What is that called? I call it dinner, but around here it's called supper. Oh, okay. Oh. Where where are you? So it's at? a southern thing. Yeah, I'm in North Carolina. Yeah, I told I told you it's a, it's a southern thing. You see all those old movies with the yeah. horse and buggy and all that stuff. <laughs> Pop, when are we gonna get supper? Yeah, you know, you know a, a hot meal at night is, is supper, and uh, dinner is is an afternoon afternoon meal. Oh, so it is okay. So I thought I've never heard of that before, but that's great. It's good. Yeah, my all mom's right, so. my mom's the only one that that does that. Wit. You ever play N sixty four? Yeah. What were yeah. the What are the three best games ever on N sixty four? If you're wrong, I'm gonna rain another frog plague on you at your pool in the background there. <laughs> uh, King Griffey Junior. Major League Baseball. Oh. NFL Blitz. Oh. And uh, Mario Kart. Golden there Eyes go. not in your top three. Nah. I wasn't very good at it. I wasn't very good at it. You weren't very good. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah NFL knows. Blitz, though, I'll take on anybody in the world, NFL Blitz. Oh. No. That was me. Blitz and, and Jam. NBA Jam. NBA Jam. You played NBA Jams on N64. I only, I, did. I only did that on Sega Genesis. That's it. I didn't even know they had it on Genesis. Oh, my God. He's all heating day. up. Yeah. I played Sega, too. Yeah, you'd have to go. <laughs> yeah. And put the thing I in did there. that with Sonic yeah. my whole life. Are the frogs good since you've been home? Yeah. No, it's uh, it was a... May to August situation. Oh, okay. So it's seasonal it's cold now. now. Yeah. It's cold now. All right. So wait, let's dive into it first off. Are you pissed off that you're not playing ball right now because of the talent on the roster? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we feel like we should still be playing uh, based on the guys that we had. And, uh, you know, we stayed healthy. We had a healthy year for the most part um, and just didn't get it done. What did guys say right after the game, like in the clubhouse? Because I know it clears out quick, and it's always weird. These guys talk about it, yeah. right? It's like quick, and then all of a sudden you're home, and you know the whole, the whole six month lifestyle, seven month lifestyle just turns into a memory. So, did, did anyone say anything that? I mean, obviously, I know it's we always try and like turn this down from fans because they're like did everyone get together and there was a speech and whatever like that's not really a football <laughs> thing but did you just hear anything or have any conversations with guys that you'll remember that stood out to you about like what you think you know either went wrong or something that you'll remember on the positive side of things yeah well we probably did it a little different than um i guess years past that i'm used to i mean we guys are kind of sitting around after the game um you know, pretty bummed out, and then uh, Belter stood up and spoke, considering it was uh, potentially his last year. He just wanted to address that and, you know, say if it was his last year, just, um, you know, thanking the guys that we had for making it a good year for him and all this stuff, and then that kind of uh, uh, snowballed into um, Louis Rivera retiring and, um, you know, us giving our thanks to him and then, you know, other guys, you know, stepping up speaking and, um, you know, saying a lot, a lot of different things, a lot of different emotions and all of it was, was covered from, um, you know, gratefulness to anger, to, uh, you know, frustration and, um, sadness, uh, all of it, all, all the emotions were touched, uh, at the, at the end of that game. So it was a, I don't want to say it was a, like a, a fun meeting by any means, but it was, uh, it was a good meeting. It was guys got, got it out there and, um, it was an emotional meeting. Did Belder, did you say Belder announced his retirement or he's saying that? It no, he, yeah, no, he said he wasn't sure what the future held for him. Um, and he said, if this was it, then, you know, he was very grateful for the time that he got with, with our team this past year. And Louis Rivera retired. Yeah, yeah, that was announced officially. Uh, Louis, yeah, Louis, he's retired, so good for him. Good for him. What a dude. Kratz, you got to remember, you can't say that, and you got to help me out here. Who, who is Louis <laughs> Rivera? Sorry, third base coach. Third base coach. Third yeah. base coach, okay. Just I thought should have been, ma- been a manager. He's a third base coach in 14 when I was there. 
and he's been there ever since. And I really thought the way he connected with guys, I thought he could have been a good manager in in Chicago, but they gave it to somebody else. I agree. Well, let me ask you this question, man. Going through this whole process, um, he had an awesome year. Um, is there anything said to you before uh, the playoffs start here about, you know, playing time or anything like that? Because you didn't start one game. You know, I'm not trying to press the buttons or anything, but I'm curious. Like, there there had to be something said, no? Um, I mean, kind of. So, it, you know, I – I don't want to take away from what Biz did. Biz was great down the stretch and, uh, you know, played great offensively, defensively. Uh, whether he was playing third base, second base, right field, first base. Um, uh, he, he did a great job on defense and offensively started to put together some, some good at-bats. Um, and, you know, I went through a little bit of a funk there at the end, and I guess it was enough to keep me out of the lineup uh, in the postseason, which – it was a bummer. Uh, nobody wants to to not play, especially in the playoff game. Um, selfishly, I kind of thought that I did enough throughout the year to to warrant that um, that chance to to make a mark in the playoffs. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's not my call. Uh, we have deep a deep roster, a lot of great players, and um, you know I was happy that those guys got a chance to to be in that moment, but. It's it's hard when you're not out there, and especially when when you're losing and, and your team loses, to feel like uh, feeling like I could have could have helped, could have done something, could have uh, come up with a big hit um, to get some momentum going, or or cause something on the bases to score a run or um, something. So, and uh, then the decision was made to not <laughs> not start me, and um, that's kind of it is what it is. How's that, how's that conversation go down? Because for me, one time I didn't make the roster. I got called to the front of the plane, flying to the city, and I sat with the, with the manager. Knew I wasn't going to make the roster. Another time I was active for the first round, and then we got to the next city, and we were hitting BP, and I was sitting in the stands, and the manager came up to me and told me then. So how does that, how does that go down, and what's, what's said for you? Or was there no meeting? Uh, I, I just kind of assumed I was going to be on the roster. And then the night before the playoffs came out or the playoff game was, uh, the night before the playoff game, they sent out the lineup and I wasn't in it. So that was kind of how it went down. So no real conversation about that. Just you got the, you got the text on team snap and saw that you weren't in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of had a feeling the way the, the, the year had ended that I probably wasn't going to be starting. Um, but yeah, it wasn't wasn't didn't know for sure until the night before. What do you do you sleep better or worse the night before finding out that you're not playing in a big game like that? Because we were talking about it before. We were talking about it with pitchers, like, hey, they didn't tell they didn't tell Bryce Elder um, that he's pitching to till today so that he wouldn't have to sleep on it. And my thought is, hey, if I don't know if I'm playing. I'm not sleeping as well as if I do know if I'm playing or I don't know if I'm playing. So for you, how was that the night before sleeping on that anger? Yeah. I mean, I, I hate, I hate not playing, uh, especially when I, when I feel like it's, um, I feel like it's not a day off. It's a benching. I, I just, and not that I, I feel like I'm warranted to be in every, in the lineup every day, but, um, I just, I just hate not playing. I, I want to be out there and, um, uh, because I feel like I, I can contribute, I can do things to help the team win. And uh, when I'm not playing up to my capability and it, it, that reflects on me not being in the lineup, it's, it's, it's frustrating uh, to me. And, um, again, not saying that that I deserve to be in the lineup because I, I did go through some struggles down the stretch, but um, I've always got that confidence in myself that I can do things to help the team win. So when I got the, the lineup and saw I wasn't in it, it was um, – Tough night, tough night of sleeping, just knowing that I wasn't going to be be in there to, to help the team. And um, did get in there for two of bats uh, first night and then didn't really get a chance to do much the second day. So um, got to play a little bit, but again, it's just, uh, just unfortunate the way the season ended. And you had the streak too. I don't want to forget that. What, was, what did the streak end at when you had the games played at one point? 
with KC? Uh, 550 something, 552, I think, 554, something like that. Uh, That's awesome. That is awesome. Because, I mean, <laughs> yeah. dude, I think I was usually but, a few uh, guys a year. What? What's that? Oh, what happened? Well, I couldn't get into Canada. <laughs> Because of the whole vaccine deal back back when that was that was happening, so uh, right. yeah. True. But I yeah, I mean, I, I guess it would you know it had gone, I don't know, 10, 20 more days or more games, and then when I got traded, uh, I wasn't gonna be playing every day anyway. So, uh, but yeah, that was a five fifty something. So, uh, the thing I'm most proud of is is um, I'll be thirty five in January. And I've never, you know, I'm not going to win. I haven't spent one day on the, on the DL or IL, I guess, I guess now. So um, I'm pretty proud of that. I'm proud of, uh, you know, the way I keep my body and, and uh, the mentality that I have when I'm out there playing to, uh, to stay on the field and, and stay in the lineup. Yeah, not easy to do. We know it. Okay, so on the offense for a moment, because I know you said, like, obviously – you guys think you should be playing right now? Like, what do you think happened? Not just in the two playoff games where I think it was one run, but just for the season, is that the part of the team where you're like, damn, why didn't we score more? Like, what's the part where you're looking back and you're like, this team's too good to not do blank? Yeah, I think manufacturing runs uh, was the, was the big, was the big situation uh, or the big, the big fault in that team. Um, I don't know what the numbers were, but they probably weren't very good as far as getting runners in with, from third less than two outs, um, moving runners over uh, on second with nobody out. Um, I think we had to do a lot of double plays as a team, and I don't think we were very good hitting uh, with runners in score position. Uh, we had some guys with some uh, decent numbers if you look at it just just uh, you know from a, a sheer stat page standpoint you know we had some guys with some decent numbers but um throughout the course of the year we just didn't do a great job consistently of producing runs and you can look at ops you can look at all these numbers you want to but at the end of the day you gotta you gotta produce runs and you gotta find a way to get a guy in from third you gotta find a way to put the ball in play you gotta find a way to do certain things to help produce runs and i don't think uh we did uh we lived up to the capability that we had as an offense to do that. And, there, and there's so much, there's so much talent in there that it's going to happen. It's just one of those, one of those years where it just didn't happen collectively. Like everybody seemed to struggle uh, in doing, at getting the big hit, getting the run, the, the RBI single, the, the two RBI, two out single. And um, people look at, people look at our base running as well. And the fact that we got thrown out on the bases uh, certain situations, and I, I look at, you know, I, I was on the team, so I saw it every day. I think a lot of people miss, don't understand what a good, a right base running play is, and how sometimes when you're aggressive, you force the other team to make a play. It seemed like when we would make the right play, the other team would make the play, would make the throw every time. And I've never seen so many outfield assists on on one team. I mean. We would go first to third or a dirt ball or tag from third, and the guy would make the perfect throw, one hop right on the back. It seemed like every time. So uh, there was some frustration with the base running aspect of it, but I really don't think – there were some blunders. Don't get me wrong. There were some blunders. But I think as a whole, I think we ran the bases pretty good. I think we just caught some bad luck. No, for sure. You guys were running – I thought your base running was way better than it was last year. Way better. I thought that was a huge upgrade. I, I understand you made some outs, but you can't make those outs without being aggressive. Yeah. It's like, you know, it was a whole it was a whole mindset shift, reading yeah. the game and everything. I thought I thought you guys look great on the bases, but maybe I'm maybe I'm just a huge Dalton Varsho fan too. So Varsho. <laughs> he's the best. <laughs> he's he's the best. A little just a little Wisconsin ball of baseball. But anyway. <laughs> So you're talking about like in-game things. If I'm a catcher and I'm watching and evaluating what Jose Barrios has out there, I can't take him out of the game. I can't. I also know as the catcher what the game plan is. How did you see it from your vantage point? So, look, I mean, 
I, I got to ask after the game, I had one guy come up and talk to me after the game, and he asked about that. And I, I said I hated it. I hated the move because I hated that Hosey didn't get a chance to go out and have that, like, signature, I'm putting the team on my back, get out of my way type game. Um, mm-hmm. I, thought he, I thought he earned that chance. Um, he was great for us all year, and he was, he was absolutely dealing and um, so, you know, it, everyone's got their game plan. Our, our coaches and, and, and front office had, had their game plan going into the game. And, um, you know, it looks bad because it didn't work out. Um, but from a, a, a baseball player's standpoint, there's a lot of times where we've gotten so focused and so stuck on numbers and not letting – a pitcher face a lineup for a third time, or this righty face this righty, or we can't let this lefty face this lefty. When you're locked in and you're going, it doesn't matter that I'm. I don't care if when I'm when I'm feeling good. I don't care if they got a right-handed submariner or a slinger coming in throwing 95 from the side. It doesn't matter because I'm locked in and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this guy, you know. And even if the numbers say over the course of the year, the course of my career, I don't hit this guy very well. When I'm locked in, I guarantee you I do. Ozzy was locked in, and I guarantee you if he had cruised through that that lineup again a second time, that third time, it wouldn't matter because his stuff was sharp and he was cruising and he was he had that competitor uh, get out of my way look in his eye. And I think a lot of times that gets lost in, in – the way we evaluate today's game. And that's kind of, it's, it, it's a shame. Um, but again, you know, it, it looks bad now because it didn't work out. Um, I feel bad for Kikuchi. Kikuchi was amazing for us all year. And um, he got put in a situation that he hadn't, he hadn't been on. He hadn't come out of the pen all year. So tough spot, tough spot for him. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus with it, but it, it was just uh it was kind of a, it was it was a shock, you know, that that we were pulling him so early, and um, you know, I feel bad for Jose. Bro, preach right now because I've said this all along. The analytical department, it's good for a couple of things, but most of the things, it's paperwork, it's toilet paper. Honestly, when a guy is hot on the mound or hitting. You know, I said it before. I was hot one time for the last 10 games. I'm going to face Scherzer. Like, oh, you struggle against him. I said, I don't care who I'm facing. I'm hot right now. Leave me alone. I mean, there had to have been something in Barrios' mind because when he got taken off the mound, it kind of like he knew it. it. It wasn't like, you know, he wasn't fighting for it. Not saying like he didn't want to pitch, but at the same time, I think he kind of knew like I was going three innings and that was basically it. Like there's got to be some kind of disconnect there where you see a guy shoving. Like, you got to find a way to make a change there, that in-game analysis, that in-game, you know, feel. So, for me, and what you were saying, I think it's just so spot on, man. People don't understand. If you're not a baseball player or an athlete, per se, that grit inside of you, if somebody's tearing something up, you know, we can wait to bring those guys in. And I feel like Barrios, at the same time, just kind of knew and felt he was coming out, and he just walked off like nothing. And, and you know, not to his fault, I, I think – you know, there was that disconnect and, you know, talking, I don't know if you talked to Barrios, did, did he have that same feeling? Yeah. I mean, I, the, 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 the game plan was um, from my understanding was communicated to the staff before, uh, to the pitching staff uh, before the game. Um, so the pitching staff knew kind of what the plan was pregame. Um, I think in Jose's mind, like, most of our minds, he was pitching so well. He thought he might maybe may have earned a, another couple of batters, another couple of innings. Um, so you know, when Schneid came out, I think he was he knew that it was they were gonna do what they talked about. And um, Jose's great. He's just such a professional, and he, he's uh, I was hitting, and he, he came in, and just like anybody would have done, he let out some frustration. Um, you know, in a in the professional way underneath where nobody could see it, and um, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't motherfucking anybody. He wasn't doing anything that you know would cause you to turn your head. He was just frustrated because he wanted he wanted the ball. He wanted the chance to put the team on his back and keep our season going, and he didn't get that chance past the third inning. Um, so, but he let it out, and he was good after that. And um, after the game, he gave. 
in the locker room. He was one of the guys who stepped up and gave a passionate, great, amazing, one of the best speeches um, I've heard a teammate make, frankly, in my in, in all my years of playing. So uh, kudos to Jose, one of my favorite teammates I've ever played with. Just an incredible, incredible person. Uh, the work ethic he has is, is second to none, and the care that he has for his teammates in the game is – it's why I hated it so much that he didn't have a chance to have that staple signature game. Um, so maybe everybody will learn from it. Was Schneider and Pete Walker, were they handcuffed on this decision? You feel like they were handcuffed? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not going to speculate or throw people under the bus, but there was, um, there was definitely some confusion among the players as to, as to what – what was going on. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what happens behind those doors, behind the coaches' doors, on the conversations that go down. Um, I just know what's communicated to us and, and the words that go around the locker room. And uh, we were, I mean, we were confused about it and we were confused as to where, uh, I guess we want, uh, we just don't know the conversations that go on. Yeah. You don't, you're not, you're not in there, but you did hear the conversation that Ross Atkins had. Do you feel like? Do you feel like an organization? You want an organization to have each other's back, no matter what. Like you've you've had people's back while you've been talking with us here today. Like for Ross to come out and say one hundred percent, it was him. It was him. It was not me. It was not me. And anything else, it was not me. Do you feel like that was a little cold? Do you feel like that's like a a cold way of handling something? And maybe. You would have done it differently. Maybe, you know, Schneider did it differently when, when he spoke in his post-game conference. Um, um, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm not sure what you're talking about with Ross. Did he have, like, a, was this after the game? This was two, two days later. Scotty, you remember how many days later it was? Two or three days later. Oh, was, it, was it a press conference? It was a press conference. Ross Atkins stood up there and said, he has, he has no influence on the game plan. That is one hundred percent. Did he use the word one hundred percent, Scott? I don't remember. But he 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 said he didn't basically say he said that is John Schneider and uniform personnel only meeting who makes those decisions. I'll bring it in just so Wit has the context because this is real, and I'll just go direct quote on the yeah the post game kind of or post season kind of wrap up um, quote. I found out about it when you did. When Kukuchi was getting warm in the first inning, it was very clear that we had a strategy to potentially deploy. John Schneider made the decision to deploy that. There was not an influence from the front office, or from the office, he called it, that fact in, factored into that, other than maybe it was an organizational strategy communicated to players. When I say organization, I'm including players, many players over the course of, of the days prior to that strategy it was interesting. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm pretty sure the players were aware of the, of the, um, the strategy going into it. Um, you know, Ross may not have had any, any say in that. I, I don't know if, if he's in those coaches meetings, if he's involved in it or not, I really don't know. Um, I know the analytics department is, is pretty heavily involved from, my understanding, at least from the pitching side of it, um, and you know, like most teams are. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, again, I I can't really comment one way or another on that because I'm not sure what conversations go on behind closed doors. I mean, you know, Kratz. I feel like most most managers nowadays are working with a a group. I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> that's any secret i mean there's probably like five dudes that can say kick rocks if someone tries to tell them something right like i would say dusty baker bruce bochi you know a few of the dudes that have been around for the a while dudes. yeah but not you imagine that last night i mean that was cruising what? i said like if avaldi would have come out last night i mean guy was cruising um you know it could have <laughs> As soon as he comes out, Baltimore could have had some energy. Like, okay, you know, we got a new guy. Let's let's see if we can get this guy. Because uh, obviously, we can't get can't get Nate tonight. So, yeah, it's I don't know. I'm kind of old school in that way, where um, 
as a player, you know, if a guy's, if a guy's dealing that night and it's going to be an uphill battle for you to get anything going off him. And so your mindset turns into what do we got to do to get him out of the game? You know, let's make, maybe make him throw pitches or uh, do something. Let's do something to try to get him out of the game and get somebody else in there who might not be a sharp. So uh, I'm just, yeah, I mean, there's numbers just don't show that. And I guess I get so frustrated with analytics. Um, what's the, what's the um, saying paralysis by analysis? It's, you can't, you can't make it a crutch. You can't, you can use it to help you, but you can't, you can't just rely on it. You're speaking, you're speaking Todd's language. Todd is over there. He's, he's jumping around. <laughs> hey, if that, if that happens to you, like, let's say, let's say you're in the twins dugout, but take your, you know, how you guys reacted. Cause I know if a dude's out on the mound and he sucks, it's a race to the bat rack. It's like, you're yelling, like we got shorts on out here. It's BP. But are you talking about the opposite? A dude is dealing. You're like, oh my gosh, how are we going to get this guy out? And the other team gifts that to you. What's that, what's that dugout like? Is everyone like, ho, 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 we did it. MVP walking out to the mound, taking that guy out. I mean, I think I think I they they said post game. I think they were excited that that we took him out. So uh, I mean, I'm sure I, if I was on the other side and and I got to face Ozzy and and he had his A stuff and I only had to face him one time, I think I'd be pretty excited. All right, let's finish strong here. So it's the off season. We'll get into free agency another time. I mean, it's October right now. So wait, 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 free wait, free agent. A ton of mutual options always get picked up. <laughs> Has a mutual uh, option ever gotten picked up? Yeah, one yeah, time. No. One time? One time that I know of. <laughs> okay. Keep it to yourself. So anyway, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Let's let's let that play out and oh. then we can talk about the potential free agent process. The potential free agent process. Um yes, thank you. We saw the nice little video put together about the golf tourney. So give us the update. The excitement level for you to have something really cool and new to look forward to. Now you can actually like devote some time to communicating with people that are going to be there. You know, like it's the season. So I know you were looking into things as a fun little kind of side project, side hustle, take your mind off when you're um, outside of the ballpark. But now you can dive in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we so far we've got a, a great group of guys that have, that have signed up. Um, another handful that have committed um, to play, but just are kind of finalizing some scheduling things. And uh, really guys are checking with their, with their wives to, to make sure they can go is kind of what it comes down to. Um, but we got, we got some spots open uh, left. So any former or current players that see this, that, that are interested in playing this, this, uh, this true golf tournament, um, go to our website, go to our Instagram, shoot me a, a message on Instagram or, or email. And um, we, we got, we got some spots left open. It's uh, it's going to be fun. If you like golf, I mean, it's a true golf event, a true golf tournament um, at the Ritz Carlton in Orlando. It's the week before they play the, uh, the father son event, PGA father son event where Tiger and John Daly, those guys play in it every year. Uh, it's a great course. The Ritz there is an incredible uh, family, uh, family accommodating resort. Um, there's going to be three ways. I mean, it's a, it's a true golf tournament. So you, the, uh, the entry fee covers your nights at the hotel, your caddy fees, your right, your four rounds, one practice round, three tournament rounds. Uh, we'll have a great party and some great sponsors. Um, and that entry fee also includes your contribution to the purse. Uh, because if you win or if you place, uh, you're going to win money just like a true golf tournament. There's three ways to do it. There's going to be a gross winner who's going to win the majority of the money and, and, um, and be crowned the best golfer in baseball. Uh, that's just the best score over the three days. Uh, there's going to be a net uh, division, which is a handicap division um, to keep it that you don't have to be uh, a scratch golfer to, to, to have a chance to, to win and uh, to win some money. And then after the first day, you'll get – um, paired into a team of four. You won't necessarily play with that team, but your team, um, you can still contribute to your team. And if your team wins, uh, we haven't quite decided what the 
if, if the winning team is going to win money or but we have some um, some prize things that uh, will probably be gifted to the to the winning team. So a lot of ways to win. Uh, we're going to have some closest to the pin, longest drive, uh, maybe some raffle items with really, really uh, some, some cool stuff, cool prizes, cool trips. And um, so, like I said, there's some spots left open. Any current or former players that are interested, shoot me a shoot me a, a message on Instagram or go check out our uh, Pro Athlete Golf Tour, I believe. I should probably know that for sure. But <laughs> go to the go to the Instagram or and uh, and shoot them a message or, or sign up. Is there? I mean, we we just passed our two hundred active player guests on this show. So, is there anybody? Is there like a wish list? Are you like, dude? I would love it if this guy would come out that you haven't connected with. I mean, you got Nick Punto and Kyle Loesch, so I know you guys have your like elite of the elite guys coming. But is there so, somebody that you're like, I want to see Salvador Perez on on the links just to take his money? Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't really know. Um, there's, there's a handful of guys that you hear that play golf. Um, the, the, the three guys that I've heard, current guys that are the best players are uh, Aaron Hicks, Jeff McNeil, and Ian Happ. Uh, Happer's going to be on his honeymoon, so he can't go. Um, I did send Hicks and um, McNeil uh, an invitation – uh, to the clubhouse, which a lot of those I found have kind of got lost in fan mail, so that's kind of a bummer. But I uh, would love it if McNeil and um, uh, and Hicksy could uh, could make it because I've just I've heard about how great of a golfers they are. But besides that, I mean, you know, I, I don't really know around the league outside of guys that I've played with, you know, who golfs. So it's hard to reach out to to everybody because you just don't know who's interested in playing golf or not. So. Um, Please, I'll reach, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reach out. I'll reach out. I'll reach out to Hixie. Has Burnsy? Has Corbin Burns? Has he signed up? I didn't see his name on there. Um, I don't know. I uh, okay, yeah. that's fine. I'll re I'll reach out to him for you. Okay. Other Got other people right. are doing it. And Happers, Happers vacation time. It's not honeymoon. Come on, man. Like you can, yeah, you can go for your honeymoon. Yeah, just honeymoon at the Ritz. She yeah, I mean, that's a boss honeymoon for sure. Yeah. And who's gonna be and who's gonna be mic'd up? Can we get like a Mookie, a Moose mic up, or like is Trout coming out? Like Trout's got his own golf course. He should have. He should. He should be hosting this thing in a few years. Yeah, Trout's another one. I haven't uh, uh, I haven't heard back from from Trout, but I'm sure he gets piles and piles of mail. So uh, not like that. this. This is big league mail. <laughs> This is not this is not Whit Merrifield saying, "Well, me and my son, we've been doing a, you know, we've been collecting <laughs> autographs of all our favorite Blue Jays of all time, and we love it when you get a hit because we say get a hit, Whit. Mike Trout's getting a real, he's getting a real letter from you. Uh, yeah, yeah. We try to get it like put on every every player's chair, and uh, I think that uh, the club is kind of uh, the communication got lost. But um, but yeah, like we're. We, like I said, we got some spots left over. So if anybody is interested, we'd love to have you. Done. We, we've got a pretty good network. So we'll do some, we'll we'll do some damage out. on that and uh, yeah. report back for the next combo. So wait, enjoy the uh, off-season hang for now. We'll uh, grab you again in a couple of weeks, all right? Sounds great, fellas. If you have a Good minor league action. tournament, if you have a minor league tournament, I'll join that one. <laughs> Smaller entry fee and we'll stay at the Red Roof Inn. Yeah, <laughs> Cratch, you and I should go half together, kid. <laughs> our, our strokes would not – we would not do well. We wouldn't win this thing if we were best ball, Todd. That's true. Uh, and, I don't and imagine you having the softest hands, Cratchy. You get a what? I don't imagine you having the softest hands. No, putting is not my go-to. <laughs> but but down here in my studio, I got I got my putting green. So you just keep this thing going. Once it, once it comes up to Trout's course in 2025 – You'll see the big fella out there. Humble brag there, huh? In my studio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> throw, throw that one in there. Just in my studio. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Father's going first round there. Oh, man. Hell yeah. Uh, and the website, proathletegolftour.com. Yep. Proathletegolftour. There it is. All right. Thank you, Wit. Appreciate you, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, fellas. See you guys.